So let's now start on the topic of motion along a straight line or kinematics in which we take a look at how the position of an object changes with respect to time. First, let's have definition of terms. We have an object on the x-axis. With respect to the x-axis, the object has position. With respect to the origin, x is equal to 0. The object has position x not. Initial position x not. If the object is moving along the x-axis, the position of the object will change from initial position x not to final position x. The object will undergo change in position delta x. Delta x is referred to as the displacement of the object. Displacement is change in position. Delta x is just equal to final position minus initial position. x minus x naught. Since position is measured in terms of length, particularly the magnitude of the position is measured in terms of length, displacement is also measured in terms of Length. Thus, the unit is unit of length. Unit of displacement is meters, centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, and so on. Now, these units are metric system units. We also have the English system units. I will leave it up to you to look up the English system. You have inches, feet, yards, and so on. Be able to convert from metric system to English system and vice versa. Likewise, in terms of the metric system, you have the prefixes of the metric system. So familiarize yourself with the different prefixes of the metric system. You have centi, milli, kilo, and so on. If we take a look at how fast the position of the object is changing, we have what is referred to as the velocity of the object. Rate of change of position. And calculus defines rate of change of position, rate of change, as you have velocity v is equal to very small change in position divided by very small change in time. You have dx divided by dt. dx over dt is also differentiation of x with respect to time. So you have velocity v is equal to dx over dt. If the position of the object is changing, you have how fast the position of the object is changing, velocity. We also have how fast the velocity is changing. We have acceleration of the object. Rate of change of velocity. If velocity is dx over dt, acceleration is dv over dt. A is equal to dv over dt. Very small change in velocity divided by very small change in time or differentiation of velocity with respect to time. In terms of unit, velocity is has a unit of meters per second, centimeters per second, kilometers per hour, and so on. Whereas acceleration unit is meters per second squared centimeters per second squared, and so on. Note that these quantities, position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, these are all vector quantities. Not only do they have magnitudes, they also have directions. 
So when doing analysis involving these quantities, bear in mind that they are vector quantities. You have to take into account their directions when you do your analysis. And now some notes for this course, particularly in terms of motion along a straight line. For convenience and simplicity, we will limit the straight line motion to either along the x-axis or along the y-axis. Of course, any type of straight line will do motion along a straight line, straight line motion after all. But again, just for our course, for convenience and simplicity, we will limit our discussion. We will limit the motion to be either along the x-axis or to be along the y-axis. Now, as we have mentioned, position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, they are all vector quantities. They have both magnitude and direction. For the direction, Along a straight line, for instance, x-axis, you have two possible directions. Either towards positive x direction or towards negative x direction. We will consider positive direction to be the positive x direction or positive y in terms of the y-axis. While the negative direction is towards negative x or negative y again in terms of the y axis. So positive direction is towards positive x while negative direction is towards negative x. For instance, if you have delta x is equal to positive 5 meters, that means the displacement of the object, the change in position of the object is 5 meters towards positive x direction. If delta x is equal to negative 10 meters, the displacement or the change in position is 10 meters heading towards negative x direction. In some cases, you might encounter the term deceleration. This simply means the object is slowing down. The magnitude of the velocity of the object is decreasing, getting smaller and smaller as time passes by. The object is slowing down, you have deceleration. Note that deceleration does not necessarily mean negative acceleration. Some books might refer to deceleration as negative acceleration or if there is deceleration, they set the acceleration to negative. But for our course, simply because we have two possible directions, positive x direction and negative x direction for the x-axis, deceleration simply means the object is slowing down. Deceleration occurs when acceleration is opposite in direction as the motion of the object. For instance, in many cases, in many books, the default direction is positive direction. So if the, deceler the object is decelerating, the acceleration is negative direction. So negative acceleration. That's because they set the default direction of the motion to be positive direction. But in terms of x-axis, positive x and negative x direction, deceleration does not necessarily mean negative acceleration because there will be cases wherein you have the object moving in the negative x direction and the object is decelerating. If the object is moving in the negative x direction and it is decelerating, that means the acceleration is opposite in direction. So that's positive direction. 
the acceleration is positive and yet you have deceleration. Negative acceleration for the purposes of our course simply means the acceleration is heading towards the negative direction. And unless otherwise stated, initial position is considered to be zero. The same goes for initial time. Case in point, delta x, in many situations, we will simply refer to delta x as x. Because we consider x initial to be zero. But if the problem tells you that there is a value for initial position, x naught, then delta x is equal to x minus x naught. But under normal circumstances, we set x naught to zero. Therefore, delta x is equal to x. So in many situations in our discussion of motion along a straight line, when we say displacement, we use x. Again, because we set the x initial to 0. The same goes for initial time. It has been observed that the type of motion that an object will undergo will depend on the acceleration of the object. So, just focus on the acceleration and that will tell you what type of motion in a straight line the object will experience. The acceleration may be constant or it may not be constant. If the acceleration is constant, you have two cases. The acceleration may be constant at a zero value. You have uniform motion. The acceleration may also be constant at a non-zero value, in which case you have uniform acceleration. For uniform motion, acceleration is constant at zero. The rate of change of velocity is zero. That means the velocity is not changing, the velocity is constant. For constant velocity, v is equal to dx over dt reduces to v is equal to delta x over delta t, or simply x over t. And since the velocity is constant, if you get the average velocity, V average will also be equal to delta x over delta t. On the other hand, if the acceleration is constant at a non-zero value, uniform acceleration, you have four equations to choose from, four equations by which you can analyze the problem or situation. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Displacement is equal to initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times t squared. You have v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ax. V average, average velocity, is just equal to the average of initial velocity and final velocity. So V plus V naught divided by 2. V average is also equal to delta X over delta T or simply X over T. And if the acceleration is not constant, you have non-uniform acceleration. For non-uniform acceleration, for acceleration not constant, you go back to the basic definitions of acceleration and velocity. A is equal to dv over dt, and v is equal to dx over dt, and depending on the situation, you will either have to 
differentiate or integrate or you might even have to do both one part of the problem will involve differentiation the other part of the problem will involve integration so please review the basics of differentiation and integration in your calculus And that's it for now. In the next video, we will continue our discussion on motion along a straight line or kinematics. In the next video, we'll take a look at constant acceleration. So that's uniform motion and uniform acceleration. So again, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.